Hello everybody, welcome to the Planes Final Phase Preview. We have uh, cut away half of the players, including myself, and we are left with the 14 people who went 2-0, which you can see on this graphic at the side, uh, part of Breaky T's spreadsheet, which I shall link in the description as always. Very amazing document that he's made, very, very, very helpful. Uh, there's replays of everything, there's links to VODs, there's all sorts of stuff on there, the rules, everything, absolutely amazing resource. Uh, so big thanks to him. So the, the yellow teams are the teams that went 2-0, and and the orange teams are the teams that have won 2, lost 1, and all the teams that went 0-2 or 1-2 and are eliminated right now. And the, the 14 winners of these will join Artemis Black and Crystal Hunter, who have already got their spots in the final 16. So this is for the money, the cash money tournament. So we've got <laughs> we've got the luckiest man in Blood Bowl 3, Olivier Dulac, has drawn in Arian. Um, pretty amazing. Olivier Dulac has got Skaven, which aren't a great team build, I don't think, in this. I really don't rate them very highly whatsoever. But, you know, he's obviously got loads of experience with them, very comfortable with them. And they're really, really, really good when they only get drawn against Black Orcs. <laughs> and Black Orcs, you know, one of the slowest teams versus a team that runs rings around them and kills their ball carriers because they've got strength two ball carriers versus good runners. It's a, like, it's a nightmare matchup. It's probably one of the worst matchups for Black Orcs. And he has got them three times. Like, just outrageous, outrageous good luck by Olivier Dulac. I mean, he knows how to play Blood Bowl, and it's like a fine team, right? A Mighty Blow for Blitzing, a Guard for Guarding, Juggernaut Roger, Block Wrestle Strip. But I just don't think it's a great package for, for Skaven at all. And, you know, they're not Underworld, right? You could just play Underworld um, if you want to play a Skaven team. I just I just think you should play Underworld. Um, but, yeah, having the four gutters is obviously great versus Black Hawks. <laughs> and, uh, and he's got Black Hawks again. Anarian, obviously very good at Blood Balls. And he's got these two tacklers because he knew how much they struggled versus teams like Skaven. So he does have the two tacklers and loads of block. Um, so, you know, all these blockers are better than all the guarders, right? Colian going all guard and stuff. And, uh, you know, the fact he's gone more block is going to be better versus Skaven in general, right? More knockdowns, block on the troll, more knockdowns. Um, you know, maybe you can roll the Skaven, right? Foul them all out with Sneaky Git. Loads of knockdowns on linemen. Hopefully tackle the gutters. But it's... Uh, I do like his build going for 14 players rather than the Apo. And, like, useless assistant coaches. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be really, really tough game for an Aryan. So, Olivier Dulac is my pick to win that one. And we've got Boa Piff, who is the first... Who is the first of two Dark Elf teams to go 2-0. And, oh, and hilariously... Both of the dark teams, both of the dark elf teams that went two and zero have got two assassins in. I think it's mental and terrible to have two assassins. He's got two assassins. <laughs> He's got only got two rerolls. Uh, Apo eleven players, full full complement of blitzers and witch elves. And yeah, I mean, it's just wild, isn't it? It's just absolutely wild. He's gone with dodge assassins. I think it's insanity. Um, but it's it, you know it's working out for him, right? It's working. This is Ash Rain. I've literally clicked on the wrong one. <laughs> I saw Dark Elf that was two and zero, but never mind. It's very similar. It's very similar. He's only got dodge on one of the assassins, but very similar. I do apologise for that, uh, Boa Piff. But he's got the block witch and the wrestle witch, and then three dodge blitzers. So it's nearly the same. But yeah, I mean, just amazing, right? The two the two Dark Elf teams that Inarian, no, not Inarian, Eliod, myself, Artemis Black, we all mocked the double assassin build and they both went 2-0 easily. Um, unbelievable. And he has got to play Cruz, which uh, is a bit of a tough matchup for him, but Cruz doesn't have tackle. He's got two bodges, though. And five guard, six guard. When I said five, he's got six guard and leader. So I do like that he's maxed guard on this team. And I honestly, I prefer, I still prefer the two blodges rather than one blodge, one tackle. Um, 
but yeah, he probably wishes he had the tackle for this game. And you know, like maybe the maybe the assassins will be good at stabbing linemen. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to watch them. I haven't even watched. I didn't watch any of those four assassin elf games, which is a bit sad. So it'll be nice to finally see both the assassin elf games. But uh, I'm picking Crucifer to win this game because I, you know, I don't know how good Bo Piff is at Blood Bowl. And I know his team is a bit rubbish because <laughs> he's got assassins. And I know Cruz is brilliant at Blood Bowl. So that's, you know, I am I am obviously going to be a bit biased in my picks because I don't have, you know, I haven't seen, you know, anybody play 100 games or whatever. I've probably seen Cruz play about that many in Chalice. I've seen, you know, but, you know other people like I've never seen Plotnus play right apart from in this tournament. And I think he beat Cruz. I've got a feeling he beat Cruz. Yeah, he beat Cruz. To see this place. Beat Le Marcelet as well. So he's beaten two good coaches right to get here. But I haven't heard of him myself. And he's got uh, four guards. A block and a mighty blow. I, I do prefer the ex the fifth guard there. Uh, I don't really like the troll slayer. But it's fine. I could have had the extra reroll. But you know. like The, the slayer it does help versus like the strong teams a bit. Doesn't it? But um, I don't know. I, I, I don't like it. But it's it's certainly not bad. And he's up against Talk 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 with All World Alliance. And I, I really did love the All World Alliance build. Um, I nearly took it. Elliot nearly took it. Their, their package was amazing. And he's managed to get four guard. I would have gone six. But he's got he's got a tackle blitzer. He's got a mighty blow slayer. He's got a blotch catcher, block thrower, dirty player halfling. Not not my favourite use of a double ever. But you know, it's it's a it's a fine team. But, um, yeah, I, like the roster's how I would have built with the two halflings and the three rerolls and stuff. But I feel I feel like the, his skill choices aren't the, aren't, well, they're just not what I would have done. I don't think they're the best because obviously I think my skill choices would have been the best, which is why I chose them. He thinks his skill choices are the best, which is why he chose them. <laughs> but I do think Plotinus will win this one. Dwarfs. Um, now we've got Ashram versus Strider. And already seen Ashram's team because I was confused. So here it is again. Loads of dodge. Block wrestle. Two rerolls. Apo. You know, pretty standard. Pretty standard Dark Elf team apart from it's got two assassins. Which I don't know if I've mentioned before, but I think it's crazy. And, <laughs> and he is up against Strider on Lizards. One unlucky person was going to get Strider on Lizards on this, and it is it is Ashram. And like, look, having having a Dark Elves versus Lizards is pretty much in the Dark Elves' favor. I wouldn't say like massively, but I'd say they're marginal favorite. Like, it's still hard to deal with six block Saurus, right? They can just easily beat you up, and you've got loads of guys without Bludge and stuff. So like, it's without Dodge, it's not easy. But um, and I don't know if Stab is. Well, first of all, I don't even know if Stab's been changed for Blood Bowl 2020. And I don't know if it hasn't been changed, whether Cyanide have implemented it correctly. Because in Blood Bowl 2, Stab was affected by Stunty, and it shouldn't have been. So, you know, Stab might be better in Blood Bowl 3 than it should be. I don't know any of that. But I'm still going to bet on Strider winning. Um, so there you go. No respect earned from me for the two the two Dark Elf teams. I am betting on them both losing uh, purely on the basis that they've picked Assassins. <laughs> now we've got Colian with his Black Orc team here. 2-0. and oh, And he's gone Max Guard. Beautiful. I love the Max Guard. And uh, Block Troll. And obviously the Sneaky Git Fowler. And you know, like it's really good, right? Re you know, he leverages the Brawler by not having Block. Which is, well, sorry, he, he he gets the ability to go six guard because Brawler mitigates the loss of block a tiny amount. And then with grab with the guard and how good fouling is these days, I really think he should have gone 14 players like in Arian because, you know, he wants to be fouling with all of these, all of these guard assists. Um, I think, honestly, I think the, the block is better than the, than the guard, but it's really fun. It's a super fun team. Um, I think block is probably better though, or at least mostly block. And he's got a pretty tough match up against Moomin Slayer, uh, who might be on the second page here. Yep, called his team first round losers, but he is 
Underworld. He's got five Snotlings. Got some wrestler. He's, oh yeah, he's gone the safe route. No, he hasn't gone the safe route. He's gone the weird route. <laughs> he hasn't stacked on the gutter, and then he's blocked and wrestled all of the all of the rats, and then a tackler, and a jug. So it's a pretty weird build in between everything else. Some people have lent into the one turn. Some people have lent into survival. Some people have gone really random skills. Art's taken Claw and his Roger for damage. So everyone's done something, added their own little wrinkle to the underworld. This is like a bit of a halfway house. He hasn't stacked on the gutter and he's protected the other players. Um, interesting team. It's an interesting, it's an interesting match, honestly. I, I'm not that sure. Whether, I, I mean, I'm going to pick Moomin Slayer, but I think Corleone's got a decent chance. But, you know, ultimately, Black Orcs are not the best team. Uh, but, you know, all that guard could cause Moomin Slayer problems. We'll see. Now we've got Hiru on Dwarves. Overpowered Dwarves. Uh, I think Hiru beat a Lizardman team to get here, right? Necronome? Did he beat Necronome? Yeah, so, you know, he beat Necronome on, on Lizards, so... He's, he's definitely done well to get here. It's really hard to beat lizards with dwarves. He, again, I don't really like the block on the runner, but he's only got one runner. So if you've only got one runner, I think you've kind of got to block him, right? I think you've got to give him block. I hate that he hasn't got guard on the second blitzer rather than a lineman. And again, mighty blow on the troll slayer. It's fine, right? Two slayers, a bit more speed, but obviously only armor rate. It's a bit dodgy. Uh... I don't hate it. I don't hate the team, but it's not how I built it. But look, he's he's won two games and he's uh, he's up against Nick or Daz with Underworlds. It's a pretty good draw for him. Pretty good draw for Dwarves. That it's one of the few teams that is like favoured versus Underworld. Of in fact, say the the only team that's favoured versus Underworld. And uh, but he does have a claw. Yeah, this is the like the random skill one, right? We've got a strip gutter runner. We've got a two heads skaven thrower. Wrestle claw block block roger. Really, really weirdly built team here from Nick or Daz. Um, not what I would have done. And he's up against a dwarf team. So I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick hero with the dwarfs there. Hero Mazel. And then we've got Gabias with lizards versus Kiander. And it's ah, so he's given up a block for a guard, standard lizards, two rerolls, apo, and uh, that means he's got the chameleon skink as well. Yep, there we go. And I, 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 I probably favour this one. It's weird, right? Because rerolls are so good. Like rerolls are literally so good. It's really, it's a really hard decision whether to go reroll or chameleon skink. I don't know. I, I, that was my problem with not taking lizards. I just didn't know which one, you know, because you don't want to get banged out with overtime and stuff. But then similarly, you don't want to be out of rerolls in overtime. So, real tough choice there on how to build your lizards. I guess I could have looked for Strider and seen what he was building, maybe copied off him. That might have been an idea, but I really didn't know how to build my lizards. Still not sure. Like, even after watching a few games, I'm still really not sure how to build lizards for this, which would be better. I think mostly you lose by getting banged out, so I, I guess 12 players in Apple would be the best. He's up against Kian Dare with Dimmy's favourite, Imp Nobs. And uh, he's built these two blitzers the, the Artemis way. Artemis loves tackle in this format. I kind of hate it, but you know, he's got a dodger and a tackler. Four guards, used his double on the ogre, which does leave him guard light, only four guards. Uh, lead it to give him the third reroll. A dirty player. Um, 13 players. It's not terrible at all. It's not a terrible build. I do prefer Cruz's build and uh, I definitely prefer Lizards <laughs> to win that match. So I'll definitely be betting on Gabby Ass winning that game. And now we've got Andy Devo, who I, so I, so I was saying uh, I was saying Olivia Dulac was the luckiest person in the tournament. Andy Devo was a strong challenger for luckiest man in the tournament. <laughs> First round he made 10 cars. Second round, he made 14 removals. <laughs> so so his, his injury dice have been absolutely insane. He's basically got to the stage without having, having to play any Blood Bowl whatsoever. Um, he's got four guard. He's got a block. And I really actually quite like the Frenzy. Instead of tackle or mighty blow, it kind of does the job of both, right? It gets you more knockdowns. Um, so it's kind of like mighty blow. 
in that it's giving you more knockdowns to, to generate more cards that way and it's kind of like tackle in that it's giving you more chances to knock down so i do quite actually like like lo so many people are taking one tackle one mighty and i think that's rubbish i would either take one tackle or one mighty blow or one frenzy and he's got the troll for like the attrition blitzers with the mighty blow so i quite like this team no apo is a, is a bit of a concern uh, I, I do prefer i would have preferred to drop the troll and uh, have have an apo but you know the troll's just so unreliable isn't it but it gives you a bit of strength versus lizard men which you know will only serve to remind you how much you should have played lizard men instead <laughs> and he's up against lock Ragen. I don't know anything about really, but he, he's oh, he's gone two mighty blows. I really don't like two mighty blow. He's gone double mighty blow, so he's only got four guard to fight orcs. Not where you want to be. He's got two runners. The troll slayer might do all right, but um, yeah. So I don't like that he's he's down guard for this match. Um, and so yeah, I mean it's, it's a good matchup, right? Good racial matchup for Devo. So uh, I'm definitely betting on Devo winning that one. And now this is maybe this is maybe this has got to be the closest match, right? This has got to be the closest match of the round. Now, up next, we've got Bright and Dion Lord in a Lizard Man Mirror. Two very good coaches with a very good team. Oh wow! But Bright has gone crazy. Bright has gone crazy with three guards. That's a really really non-standard team, right? And he's only got eleven players. Third reroll. So a very non-standard build for his. Uh, lizard men versus the very 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 standard build of Dion Lord. Which is block all the way down and then he's traded out his third reroll for a twelfth man. So yeah it's interesting isn't it? Will, will he's three guard or three block which will be better? It's it's going to be interesting, especially with the rerolls. Do you know what? This is a really hard one to predict. I don't even know who to predict for that game. But I think I'm going to have to give the nod to the blockers. I'm going to pick the Lord for that. And then we've got Galentio versus Sergal. This could have been me if I'd... Oh my god, I've misclicked. This could have been me if I'd remembered to play my stand my players up versus Galentio, but I didn't. And he took full advantage of that fact. So he's got pro elves with some dodge, a tackle, and a wrestle. I think it's not a very good team at all. <laughs> to be honest, I was I was over the moon to get this team. I just thought I just hope he doesn't get lucky one turn, and then he got lucky one turn, and I could have mitigated it, but I didn't. So uh, yeah, that was that was not great. And I think I, I don't know how he won his first game, but um, yep. Yeah. And he's up against Sergal, so, you know... Wow, and he's got no guard. Oh, this is a horrible matchup for him, isn't it? This is a horrible matchup for Galentio, because this is just max block. Max block orcs is a really horrible matchup, because now he's really going to get everybody banged down and out all the time. No tackle, so he's got that going for him. But, um, yeah, I think... I would, I would, this I wouldn't have minded as much, right? I could use my guard. So maybe I wouldn't have lost this match, but um, I think Circle will win this uh, match. So there you go. I think I'm picking Circle over Galentio there. And now I've got Diomed versus Hubbin Bubbin. This is a very interesting match as well. Because Diomed was, of course, nearly top of ladder. Well, no, he was, he was top of ladder for most of the season, Diomed. Diamond was top of the ladder for most of the season with Orcs, and he just got he just got overtaken at the end by Chunter and Art outworking him basically. Right, they just put in all the hours at the end. He he didn't compete with them, uh, couldn't compete with them. I think on just intensity, and uh, and he's taken four guard biggins, mighty blow tackle. So interesting, interesting. Twelve players. He hasn't gone for the uh, troll. She's got the apple, three re-rolls, and a bit of wasted cash. But uh, they, I, I prefer not having the troll here. So that's Diomed. And he is up against Hubbin Bubbin, who is, you know, the guy who beat me in the previous round with a, a very, very, very lucky, uh, a very lucky timeout. But, you know, I might have lost to him anyway, right? Even if that hadn't happened, 
we'd have probably gone to overtime and he's got orcs. He's only got three guard, he's gone for the troll. Um, so he's got a bit more strength to make up for a bit of lack of guard. And he's got a mighty blower and a, and a tackler and a leader for the third reroll. So it's interesting, he's got more strength, he's got less guard. I'll be that's a tough one to call, but I mean seeing as Diamond has been top for like most of the season, I think gotta give the edge to Diamond. Even though Hub and Bubbin, you know, has got a great record and uh in CCL and totally played fine against me, I I I wouldn't have fancied my chances. <laughs> it's quite funny that the two people that I lost to, I wouldn't have fancied my chances versus either of them, you know, either of their opponents in this round. But I think I'm gonna pick Diamond to win that one. And now we've got the unluckiest loser here. Eliod has gone 2-0, and, oh, and Seabros, who's, uh, well, Seabros must have won 2, lost 1, right? Yeah, it's 2-0 and oh versus 2-1. and one. So Seabros gets his worst possible matchup with the best possible coach. So this is a, a nightmare draw for Seabros. And Eliod, you know, Eliod isn't going to be over the moon, right? Because uh, Seabros is good at Blood Bowls. It's not a great... Where Where is Eliod? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, Elliot's lower because he had to concede loads to um, to get his match without uh, without inducements. So yeah, this is Elliot. We've we've stacked the gutter for one turning with sidestep and two heads, guard troll. So he hasn't gone for the you know he hasn't got the roger he hasn't gone for the roger for the one turn. Uh, mighty blow blitzer for a bit of banging, extra arms throw it to help with the one turn. Uh, Max snotlings. For maximum uh, swarming chances, and the reason he dropped the roger down was to get the fifth reroll because with this format not allowing any inducements of any kind, normally you know you would have like a bribe or whatever and stuff. But it's just the way the points worked out. They they were a bit they were a bit fiddly the underworld, not as good as they normally are. Um, but this I mean this is pretty nice, isn't it? This <laughs> five rerolls is lows, sixteen players, so it's really good for going to overtime with this team. Really good for fouling as well, because he's got 16 players and stuff. And both of which are pretty bad for Lizards, right? Lizards don't really like going to overtime, and they don't really like getting randomly removed. So that's a bit unfortunate for Seabros. And obviously no one's really, you know, Elliot, def absolutely one of the best coaches in the competition. So Seabros, you know, to be fair. So we've got five, five Saurus with block, and he swapped one block for the uh, sneaky git interesting wrinkle and he's not taken a not taken a chameleon skink at all as his 12th man and he's just got an assistant coach i think that i think the chameleon skink does help a little bit you know for two turns and one turns so i think i'd have probably gone for the uh the chameleon skink there but it's it's fine not wanting to right especially as his plan is to foul a bit so you know you don't really want to play with a chameleon skink um, you know, he's just he's just pretty much just worse. So, I mean, I've got to pick Elliot there. I think that's a nightmare for Seabros. But, you know, with some good dice and stuff, Seabros can obviously win, right? Seabros. Sorry, there's some people outside the window here. <laughs> now I've got Call Troop with humans. And now Call Troop beat, like, three lizards, I think, on his way to getting to the final versus me in the NAF-style tournament that we had to qualify. And it was pretty much with this team, right? He's got three guards on it. He's got a mighty blow. He's got a tackler. He's got a block thrower and a block catcher. 13 players. Three re-rolls. Apple. Pretty standard human team. Just I just don't think it's powerful enough, right? Like, he's, he's obviously won both games. I think the, the fourth guard is better than the mighty blow. And I just think humans in general are not good enough. <laughs> and uh, he is against Necronome with a pretty standard Lizards. He again has dropped the block for the guard. Only 11 players and 3 rerolls. But I'm definitely going to bet on Necronome to get the job done. You know, as much as Cold Troop has played, you know, you know, he's won the NAF tournament. He's obviously won both of his games thus far. I just can't bet against Lizards when they're playing versus humans. <laughs> you know, like it's just, they're a nightmare. Lizards are an absolute nightmare for everybody. Well, except Underworld, I guess. And now we've got another Lizard Man mirror, everyone's favourite. <laughs> uh, this is Smilesor with a completely bog standard team, six blocks, Chameleon Skink, two rerolls. Nothing to really say about that, we've seen it before. 
up against Benbo Baggins, who I believe did get a bye as one of his wins. Uh, and he's got flip the Tories. And he's gone block. He's got the three reels. So he's got like, you know, similar to Necron's build. He's gone for the three rerolls and only 11 players. And uh, oh, wow, he's got these. <laughs> okay. Um, so there you go. Great, great names there. <laughs> <laughs> Great names from Venbo Baggins and Flip the Tories. Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant stuff from him. So I'd love to pick him. I'd love to pick him, but I think I've got to pick Smiles. I think I think the 12 players is better. And, uh, yep, that's it. So there you go. There's the 14 matches. There's my picks. Um, oh, there was Chap. Uh, Daedal. If there's any time the guard heavy bill could be beneficial and mirror me, yeah, it's hard to say, isn't it? Yeah, clump it up, yeah. It'll be interesting though, isn't it? I think, I think you know, mostly people go block because it's better, so I think block's better. But it'll be interesting anyway, and uh, so there you go, there's all the matches. I'll put all of these on YouTube, I'll cover them all, you know, likely as replays, I might do some of them live, uh, but I will cover all 14, all 14 of these games and put them all on my YouTube. And uh, and then when it comes to the final 16, I don't know if I'll be allowed. I'm going to have to ask them if I'm allowed to do my own casts of all of the games. Because obviously if I can, I will. And put them all on YouTube. So I'd imagine that there's nothing stopping me. But, you know, they might politely ask me not to. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, I'll definitely put all of these on the YouTubes. So there you go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.